Hello and welcome to the third unit of week two. In the last unit, Rolf has introduced the conceptual rules of the success formula. He has been talking about say and structure, about conveying a message and giving that message a good structure or a good storyline. Today we will continue with the first perceptual rule set, the first perceptual step in our success formula. Now that we know what message we want to convey, we can think about how to visualize it. So it's about choosing the proper visualization. I would like to explain that by looking at an example <coughs> from a, a big German insurance company. This insurance company has in an annual report um, a pie chart showing the shares of the employees by regions. So for instance you see that in Germany we have 38% of all employees. The question is what is the message of such a chart? The problem with pie charts is that they only can convey mundane messages. So pie charts are almost never a good choice. For instance, if you would like to increase the, 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 the message with, with more information, with, let's say, um, comparisons, with explanations or even suggestions, you couldn't do that in a pie chart. Just think about you would like to compare those shares you see in this pie chart with the shares from previous year. How would you do that? It's not possible to add a comparison to a pie chart. That's why we think pie charts is not the right choice to show um, not mundane messages. I just want to show you how we could um, use a better visualization in order to convey a better or more interesting message. Let's just transform this pie chart first into a column chart. We have a stacked column chart showing the number of employees working in Germany, in, in other Europe and so on. We have the total number of employees. Well, we add a title, you already know that. So we have a standard title concept and we add a message telling us, well, the number of employees in Germany is whatever. So it's just transformed, nothing one yet. But now we can add the level of, of information and, and create more interesting messages. For instance, we could add the previous year. So it's the 38% in 2006, but the question is, what number of employees did we have before? And we see, well, there have been 40% working in Germany in the previous year. This is fictitious data, but just to give you an impression. And now that we see that the share in Germany has decreased, the question arises whether this is probably a strategy of this company, and we could increase information density by looking um, to more previous years. And, oh, okay, there has been a decrease from more than 50% to those 38%. And now we are interested about the future. Is it a strategy? Will they decrease the share of employees in, in, in future even more? And yes, they want to reduce it to almost 30%. And we can look at competitors. How are they working? Do they have a, a significant share of employees in German-speaking countries or in Germany? Um, um, and there are two competitors, maybe an international one with only a small share of employees in Germany and another one with a high share of employees. So we can talk business. And that's exactly um, what, what we think is the right thing. We should have visualizations give you a complete impression of what's going on and the good choice of visualization are those that help to transfer not mundane messages, interesting messages. Just to give you an overview um, what we could do. This was before and this was after. 
If we take a systematic approach to that, we could look at a kind of chart selection matrix. We think that if we use uh, the same chart type for a time series um, all the time and a different part, uh, a different uh, chart type for structures, for instance, we use column charts and line charts always for time series and bar charts for structures, that would help. And we use column charts for those time series that only have a few data points and if we have a lot of data points, let's say daily information over a year, then we use lines. And now we can have different types of those column charts, bar charts, line charts. We can stack them, we can normalize them, we can index them. Maybe it's too much to talk about every single chart type here, but you should know that depending from the purpose, depending from the message you want to convey, you can choose the right chart type. You can choose waterfalls. You can compare information by having overlapping columns and bars. You can have variances bar charts, line charts, or, or column charts showing variances, absolute variances, percentage variances, and you have um, waterfall charts showing variances as well. So a, a plethora of different chart types for all for different purposes. So what we suggest is try to use line charts, to use column charts, to use bar charts, and probably to use portfolio charts that I haven't uh, shown here and probably this would cover 95 or even more percent of your needs. Now that we have selected the right visualization, the question is how do we design this chart? And our suggestion is to design it as simple as possible, just to leave everything away that does not help to convey the message. No decoration, nothing. Avoid all visual clutter. I would like to show this simplify step of our success formula by using a really cluttered chart. Look at this one. Too much color, too much frames, too much whatever. And I would like to reduce all the superfluous things in, let's say, a 25-step procedure. We start by asking the question whether this colored background has any sense. Does it help to convey any message? Is there any meaning of that? No, it's not. So, if there's no meaning, we leave it away. And here we have another background, the yellow one. Is there a need for it? No, it's not. So, leave it away. Now, the logo. Does the logo help to convey a message? Maybe in an external situa situation, yes. If you have a presentation at a, on a customer side, maybe yes. But internally, you know what company you are working for, so use your space um, for information and not for the decoration of a logo. So, maybe we don't need that. And now again we have such a, a 3D kind of, of frame, um, we don't need that. And there's another frame, we don't need this one. We have this kind of 3D columns. This has been popular some years ago and it's really a problem. Um, because it's not only maybe disturbing in, 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 in the sense of clutter, but it's, it's, it's visually a problem because you see the columns or you think they are higher than they actually are because you have this 3D effect. So we really recommend not to use those 3D visualizations. Well, talking about fonts, do you see the difference between those two fonts? The difference is that we um, simplified the font type. We don't use fonts with serifas, but if you visualize on a screen, you typically use sans serif fonts like Arial or something like that. And we don't use uh, boldface 
because boldface is for highlighting. If you have, if you want to highlight something, yes, of course you can use boldface. But if everything is boldface right from the beginning, you cannot highlight it anymore. So don't use highlighted fonts. Now we look at superfluous words. That it is a graphical display. I see that it is a graphical display. I don't need that. I see that it is. It shows a development, so I don't need it. And the rest is put into a standard title on the left upper corner. You already know that. Now let's talk about this legend. We don't need that legend because it's already mentioned. The countries are already mentioned at the little charts. So we don't need that. And if we look at the little charts, there's always mentioned net sales. We don't need that. Net sales is already mentioned in the title in the upper left corner. We don't need it. And it's always mentioned division foot. It's not mentioned in the title yet. So we put it into the title and we can uh, get rid of it in the individual charts. Same with the euros. The euros are mentioned in the title so, so we don't need it in all individual charts and we don't need that scale and the numbers because we have the numbers already put on top of the columns. Now there's one thing we can talk about the number of digits. Visually, it doesn't help if you have four digits of a number. In charts, we suggest to have three digits, maybe in tables four, but here we can reduce one digit. Then we have another frame. We get rid of that frame. And the best is yet to come. Is there a need for those four colors? It's not, because it's already labeled Belgium, France, and uh, Sweden and the US, so we can get rid of the color. And if you compare this one, or maybe we can even do a little more um, semantic to show that it is plan, okay, and uh, maybe we can reduce one more digit, but if you compare that to the original one, it's really a big, big difference. Let me switch a little back and forth to see the difference. Okay, that's simplify. And if you simplify it, I want to show you really um, expressively what simplify means. If you have a really colored picture, and the interesting thing here is the 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 the, 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 the um, traffic light. If you look at the traffic light, you almost do not detect the traffic light. If we reduce the color as we do here, you immediately see the traffic light. If we transfer that to our charts, this is a black and white chart, as you have seen it in the templates the last week. And now we can add a highlight. Maybe we want to see this specific column, and we color it blue. It's like the traffic light we've seen before. You see it immediately. If we had a colored chart, you would not have even detected it. Okay, so we have selected the right visualization, express, and we have simplified our layout so we have avoided all clutter, all superfluous things. Those have been the two first steps of our perceptual design. Tomorrow we will complete the perceptual design by using the condense and the success rules, the condense and the check rules of the success formula of the International Business Communication Standards. Hope to see you again.